When you are trying to choose the best film camera for your travels, you have to take into consideration a lot of things. First of all and foremost, size. You definitely don't want to be bugged down by a camera that's too big or too bulky to carry around comfortably. Be careful as not to confuse bulk with size. They are both factors. For example, an otherwise wonderful travel camera like a Leica M8 or Leica M in general, it's often not bulky at all, but it's quite heavy. So it might not be your first choice to travel light. On the opposite side of the spectrum, another camera that I will talk about today is the Canon EOS 100. It's quite a bit bulky, not excessively so, but still, it's not huge, but it looks huge compared to the other options. Still, if you pair it with a 50mm lens, or even better, with a 40mm Canon lens, it's a super light option that will not bog down you at all. Let's see what, in my opinion, are the 5 best travel cameras for film. The Olympus XA. It's a fantastic, super small, super light travel camera with a hair trigger and a manual rangefinder, of all things. It's an automatic camera, but it has a switch to compensate for backlighting. Most important of all, a manual rangefinder, so you will be able to focus where you want to focus. It's super small, it fits practically in every pocket, and you can carry it all day without noticing it. A more modern version of the XA, up to a point, is the Olympus Mu. The original one, not the overpriced Model 2. That's probably a little bit better, but probably only your wallet will notice the difference. It's still a super small, super light camera, and it is even better than the XA in one instance. You can open it one-handed without effort. On the flip side, it doesn't have a manual rangefinder, so you will have to rely on the autofocus, hoping that everything is actually in focus. That being said, it has never failed me. The only negative is that it takes a battery that it's quite hard to find. Not super hard, but it's something that you will have to buy probably on Amazon or something like, like that. But on the other hand, it's a battery so small that you can easily carry two or three spares, and they will last you for hundreds of rolls. That is, unless you shoot with a flash. And that's the second negative of the Olympus Mu, because every time you turn it on, the flash will come up and you will have to disable it manually if you don't want to use it. It's a little bit annoying, but after a bit it becomes second nature, so it's not a big deal. Now probably one of my favorite setups of all times, a Leica CL, or a Minolta CL, that's essentially the same camera, and it will probably be even slightly cheaper, because the Minolta brand instead of the Leica brand, paired with a super small lens, something like the Bogdlander 21mm color scoper I got mounted here, or something like the super small as well Summicron C Leica 40mm F2. It's a wonderful combination, super small, super light, and super versatile because it has manual focusing with a rangefinder. If you can find a Leica CL that still has the meter working, mine doesn't, you will have a meter as well. I just use my phone. And you can change lenses. The only downsides are that the battery in the Minolta CL and the, in the Leica CL it's uh, inside the camera, meaning that you cannot change the battery without uh, exposing the film. No big deal because you will have to change the battery only if uh, your meter is working, first of all. <laughs> it's not my case. And second of all, you will have to change the battery only every hundreds of rolls, so no big deal. The only other negative is a limitation that's intrinsic to the rangefinder. You can use lenses that are shorter than 28mm, like I'm doing, but you will not see the field of view in the built viewfinder. If you want to see the field of view of the 21mm lens, you will have to look through an external viewfinder. I don't bother. Looking through the viewfinder, I will see the 28mm field of view and I will just add a little bit more uh, all around it and I'll be fine. It's cheaper, it's more compact, and there's one thing less to lose when you're in the field. The Minolta Hymatic F, it's an uncommon choice. The Hymatic was an entire family of cameras, 
some more complex and more sophisticated, some less. The iMagnic F is probably one of the cheapest ones. It's not as bad as the G version that came, I think, just right afterwards, but it strikes a nice balance between being simple to use and still giving you good results. It has a good, nice lens, not overly fast, but still fast enough for travel, unless you want to shoot, you know, at night or something like that. It has automatic aperture. It shoots really nice pictures. It takes a weird battery format, but you can just stick to normal batteries. I will link in the description how to do so. It's cheap, it's gorgeous. The only negative is that if the batteries go flat, the camera will still appear to be shooting. So be careful, use the battery check function once in a while, just to be sure your battery is actually working. Lastly, the Canon EOS 100. It's one of the cheapest options. It's one of these uh, 80s uh, SLRs that nobody cares anymore for. So they sell essentially for peanuts. Made more for the battery that came with the camera than for the camera itself, like 15 euros or something like that. But at the time, it was a professional level camera with all the bells and whistles that we associate with a professional level camera, except for the weight. It weighs pretty much like a Pentax ME Super or a Contax 139, but it has autofocus, it has different kind of metering, it has a motor drive. So it's a, a nice set and forget camera that you can shoot your content without thinking too much or that you can switch in manual mode and start using like a proper professional camera if you wish so. Pair it with a 50mm super sharp STM Canon or pair it with a 40mm 2.8 Canon for a super compact setup that's not as compact as the other options that we saw before, but is still very light and very portable. That's it for today. I wish you safe travels, have fun, and enjoy shooting your camera. See you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.